today. You and I are going to break with Senate protocol. Sort of. What we are going to do is we are going to look at a published study. The published study is primarily in reference to something called quorum sensing in relation to Vibrio cholerae. And basically, we're looking at the bacterium which causes cholera. All right, you're going to go, well, what does that have to do with uh, necessarily cytokine storms? Inside the research that was published in the public release, in basically a very, very, very important instilled in the treatment of the cholera, which even after COVID goes away or mitigates its way down, cholera is a pressing global issue. However, though, a lot of people's focus and attention is on what's happening in reference to COVID. So, in the article, is it alludes to these molecules. It could be tryptophil acetate. It could be other molecules inside of kefir. We'll have to discover a little bit later on. And the outcome in how it mitigated this cytokine storm in the atom model. So, in the study that is in the study, we will dive deeper into it and then basically elucidate the information in reference to that study buried inside the study. Now, since we don't have a DOI citation for that, what we do have is the interview from the researchers in two very prominent uh, journalistic venues out of Israel. Albeit the research itself is groundbreaking. Unfortunately, in many news pools, especially in the United States, it hasn't even touched the surface as of today. But let us proceed as follows. Bangurian University researchers developing probiotic yogurt-based drinks. Researchers at Bangurian University have for the first time identified new drug candidates based on molecules isolated from pro probiotic kefir yogurt for combating pathogenic bacteria and treating various inflammatory conditions. I am quoting, including inflammatory bowel disease and COVID-19 related cytokine storms. We'll go a little deeper into this article and then we're gonna to go to those news presses. But to proceed, kefir is a fermented probiotic dairy drink made by infusing cow or goat milk with kefir grains containing yeast and lactic acid bacteria. Probiotics are widely perceived as helping the immune functions affecting balanced microbial populations in the digestive system and potentially protecting the body against bacterial infections. All right, a lot of controversy in reference to basically COVID and microbiome and probiotics today because they're saying the research really hasn't been delved into. Well, here we go. The healthy properties of probiotics and yogurt have been widely recognized, but, quoting, our remarkable BGU, Bangor University researchers have shown how they actually have the potential to be highly effective drugs. Again, drugs to some individuals has a negative bias, but let's get past that and look at the kefir part as a whole. To proceed, quoting the researcher, da da da, of this American Associates, Ben Gurion University, and so on and so forth. Quote, it is another example of groundbreaking research and innovation at BGU, and it is. Uh, if you go to BGU's site, they do some great research. But this one in particular really is amazing. To proceed as follows. The BGU research has demonstrated that the kefir secreted molecules were able to significantly reduce the virulence of Vibrio cholerae, which causes cholera. The antibacterial effect was based on disrupting communication among the bacterial cells, which is a promising approach against antibiotic resistant bacteria. All right, then the next line down to proceed. Does that mean quorum sensing or inter interrupting quorum sensing has the same effect here? Again, I don't want to publish a bias and without a detailed, strong, well thought out hypothesis, I just want to narrate. Proceed. In a follow up study, the scientists observed that the isolated molecules had traumatic anti inflammatory properties in various pathological conditions and disease models. Here we go. For example, experimental results revealed that the molecules effectively healed mice inflicted with a lethal cytokine storm, the extreme immune response, which is one of the main causes of death in COVID-19 patients. The molecules not only eliminated the cytokine storm, 
but also restore balance to the immune system in extraordinary feat, pointing to a significant therapeutic. All right, now what I'm going to do, obviously a study hit inside the study. I'm still going to basically refer to the abstract because cholera is a global horror story for many people in all across the world. So, again, I know people's focus on COVID-19. However, though, this has been around for a long period of time, and this is where the research basically was trying to delve the outcome. However, though, today it's COVID-19. Let's get past this point, and this is information which I hope yields us that stepping stone. So the abstract is as follows. Not the abstract, actually the full published study. Cross kingdom inhibition of bacterial virulence and communication by probiotic yeast metabolites. Just to give you an idea of the encompassing benefit in reference to kefir. But to proceed, this part here may be part of it. Tryptophil acetate was shown to disrupt quorum sensing pathways. Now keep in mind too, part of the, the conjecture that we've basically delved into with the many, many research articles we've covered over the entire year was why the lethality or mortality, for example, in many Asian parts of the country and other parts of the world too, was so much lower than the United States. And what I, I personally alluded to in my very, very narrow sphere of, 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 of basically particular bias per se, is uh, the fermented foods. In the United States, we don't consume fermented foods per se in a large, in a large dynamic, but in many parts of Asia, population 4,463,000,000, the mortality rate is closer to one out of every, at this point in time, 10,500 individuals. In the United States, the mortality rate is what, one for every close to 600 individuals? And I was trying to encourage the longest period of time, the epidemiology to look at other factors outside of our standard draconian pandemic mitigation measures, which have been the same pandemic mitigation measures that we used back during the Justinian plague, many, 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 many centuries ago. All right, now, what I'm gonna do is go to the, take break from the protocol here, and I'm gonna look at two press releases in reference to this one aspect of these molecules from kefir, which I really, really like that were done in Israel that could benefit here, but it has not made our news pull us yet. So that's why I'm utilizing these particular news venues. Israeli lab cures mice of COVID style inflammation using yogurt molecules. There's the press source. An Israeli lab, and I'm going to narrate verbatim again. An Israeli lab, uh, how would I say? I try, to, I try not to use the word because it's something here in the U.S. Uh, I understand the, uh, the desire to protect people, but however, though, sometimes it interferes with the ability to move forward. An Israeli lab has C-U-R-E-D, Mice suffering from an immune reaction like that found in serious coronavirus patients using molecules from probiotic yogurt. The lab triggered a cytokine storm, the immune reaction that causes the extreme inflammation suffered by many serious COVID-19 patients in dozens of mice. Why am I reiterating? Because this excerpt is extremely enlightening. To proceed, we, quote it, we induced aggressive cytokine storms in mice akin to those in COVID-19 patients who are in very critical condition and healed 100% of those that receive the molecules, according to the researcher. If I don't say the name, it's not out of disrespect. It's because I don't want to mispronounce it out of disrespect or to be respectful. Told the Times of Israel, quote, but the other mice all died within two or three days of the cytokine storm being induced. So, key for molecules, the animal model, 100% survival, those that did not receive it as a control, I read the outcome. Among those who received the molecules, clinical conditions and clinical markers improved to normal levels, and they lived, obviously. It turns out that this can be given to critical people and have the same effect that would be wonderful. And again, these researchers, as you go delve into basically the backstory, have been researching kefir and yogurt molecules for years. Now, this one is also from the Jerusalem Post. I blocked out the word. I'll do our own censoring so we don't get censored as a whole. Can a cup of yogurt? Your case of COVID-19. This article is particularly important because it gives a mode of delivery. To proceed. 
I believe it's Jelinek and Malka, induced cytokine storms in mice, then they watched what happened. The mice that had the storm and were not treated died, as in all. But the mice that were treated with the molecules they found in yogurt had a complete recovery. The molecules not only eliminated the cytokine storm, they also restored balance to the immune system. This is something simple, available, and consumed for who knows how long. But to proceed, quote, this was really remarkable. Again, it was a study inside a study. The outcome, though, is enlightening. That's how some of the greatest things ever occur as far as discoveries as a whole is sometimes it, it takes everyone by surprise. In this case, those with kefir molecules, 100% survival in the animal model. Those without, unfortunately, on the other side of the coin, 100% mortality. The scientists said they also administered the molecules to mice via their mouths. So that's why it's important to say, hey, this is not an injection or whatever it comes down to be. This is basically something that could be done orally. They were placed in water and entered the mice digestive systems just like a normal drink. Here's an excerpt. And this happens a lot. And this really kind of surprised me because you're thinking of all the emergency authorization and the government's doing things for research and exploring all the avenues to benefit you. Not so fast. During the pandemic, Jelinek and Malka had hoped they could administer these molecules. We're talking kefir molecules. Administer the molecules to patients who are in critical condition. But regulatory hurdles delayed the process, and they did not succeed. So they can hand you a hamburger and ketchup in a hospital setting. But molecules from kefir, I digress. Now the next step is to conduct clinical trials with other synthetic storms. The research like this, this is the stuff that needs some emergency authorization to proceed forward, and also at the same time, too, funding. But still, thank you to Ben Gurion University to proceed. Cytokine storms don't only happen with COVID. Prepping for the next potential whatever. But still, it's important to know. It says this is a very bad condition with really very few treatments against it. Yet here we are. Something that's right, literally, served to us on our table for who knows how long beneath our nose. And so again, a little bit of a breach of protocol because I wanted to do that. The main reason being, too, is I wanted to get the attention now. And just to give you an example, here is one we had for a while ago in reference to traditional Chinese medicine and the potential HIV cure. And they found all the data, and these people basically had no viral load. And the problem is, somehow, the formula that they utilized became lost. So better a stitch in time saves nine. So bring it to our attention now. Keep the coals to the fire, so to say. Get people interested, integrated. Get research like this proceeding forward to human trials to validate the information that happened in the animal model. That's the same in human models. And we're just talking simple kefir. Seriously. Again, could it be toxic to some aspects? You know, I don't know. But however, though, still, you're talking about that type of, we're talking about significance, clinical significance between 100% survival and healed in animal models and the other side of the coin, that is worthy, worthy research. I really would like to see press forward. But again, since the beginning of this whole thing, in those that have been with us, how many of these nutritional protocols that empower the individual have actually been instituted or encouraged in policy making or policy decisions? Again. We all know the answers to that. And beside that point, too, for those that want to visit us on, I will cover this again uh, coming up this Saturday or Sunday morning just to see if we have a citation that basically links to this particular animal model in reference to uh, possibly tryptophilacetate, tyrosine, whatever it is coming from the kefir molecules so we can actually get some bearing and exactly have the methodology. So if I do that, I'll, or if I don't, I'll still cover this again on Saturday night coming up. And again, those, everyone's welcome. We have a little bit of a data analytic night, uh, basically on Sunday morning in reference to, we look at pandemic mitigation strategies. Uh, now that we have more states and countries dropping out of the uh, pandemic issue, 
Or, for example, like in Asia, when you have a, such a lower mortality rate compared to the United States, which has a much lower population, 329 million compared to 4 billion, 463 billion, yet the mortality is far lower in the Asian aspect. So maybe they're the epidemiology wise, and I'm speaking fast, something like, for example, fermented foods, as in, we're looking here, dairy, and so on and so forth, can play a huge role, a hidden role, in why they are not succumbing to the horrendous effects as bad as we are here in North America. Again, welcome to visit us at that time. Gratitude. Thank you. I truly hope this information finds its way to you. We're a very small audience, but again, if it just benefits one or two people, it's worth doing, it benefits one person, it's worth doing the video as a whole. Thank you. Gratitude. And humbly look forward to seeing you all once again. See you then. Bye.